Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Extreme Prejudice. Because uh, Walter Hill is making his big return to feature film directing this week with Bullet to the Head, I thought I'd review one of his past films. Now, Extreme Prejudice is a action genre film. It's kind of his return to the action genre. He left for a little bit. After he made 48 Hours, he kind of took a break and made Streets of Fire, Brewster's Millions, and Crossroads, and then finally made a return to the action genre with Extreme Prejudice. And actually, Walter Hill was very productive in the 80s. He made a film for every year in the 80s except for 1983. This is kind of his return to it. He made it for Carol Co. If you don't remember them or don't know about them, they were kind of the action genre studio. So it was a pretty good fit. The plot of this is very action genre-y, but it's also very Western. Uh, Walter Hill had the famous quote where he said that all his films are really Westerns, and I think for the most part that is very true, especially in this film. The plot of this film gets confusing. It somehow works, even though I'm like, so what the, how did, really? I don't, you know, it's just like, uh, I don't don't think about it too much, but it's like, while you're watching, you're like, why am I thinking about it too much? You're like, you shouldn't be thinking about it too much. It's extreme prejudice. Six, believed to be dead, US Army sergeants, or it's a secret that they're dead. They, the government forged that they're dead. They're part of the military zombie unit. They do secret black ops stuff kind of things throughout the world that the military needs to get done. And as long as they don't get caught. And so they're there to help rob a bank. And at the same time, you have Nick Nolte who's playing a tough Texas Ranger protecting his Texas town against Powers Booth's character who's a major cocaine dealer in Mexico. And they used to be friends and they both kind of like the same chick and she kind of goes with Powers Booth. They don't really have the most well-rounded female character in this, but it's such a macho movie. You have that storyline and the storyline with these six military sergeants who are believed to be dead but are not actually dead, robbing this bank. It's like kind of connected. Just don't think about it too much, I guess. I like Nick Nolte's Texas Ranger character because he's very much an 80s drug enforcement, tough as nails ranger. Kind of fills the John Wayne role and I think that works with Walter Hill's whole western fascination. It also works because this is released in 1987. This is right during Reagan. Nick Nolte's character, Jack Benton, he seems to work within the pathos of the time, that kind of kick-ass Reagan attitude. He's very stoic and straightforward, but he's also a typical John Wayne type role. Walter Hill kind of does like genre critiques, like look at the driver and you look at this, and this is kind of filling that role, but he's also delivering an action genre film for Carol Co. With this film, he kind of realizes what he needs to do, but also gets to do the kind of stuff that he wants to do as a director. There's a lot of Peck and Paw references. I think with the group of the military unit, the zombie unit, they're very Peck and Paw esque. Towards the end, he does have a huge Peck and Paw esque shootout sequence, which is really amazing. I think it's probably the best part of the movie. The action sequences before it, before the very end, aren't very Peck and Paw, but it felt like at the end he really took on the whole Peck and Paw thing. Walter Hill actually helped write The Getaway, which Peck and Paw directed. It's not a very PC movie. Some of the language it was like whoa also in 48 hours you'd be surprised like how kind of offensive some of the dialogue is even for the time if you're really offended by un pc dialogue walter hill's probably not for you anyway i love the cast in this film with michael ironside nick nolte powers booth rip torn i mean it's a great fucking cast it felt like a perfectly cast kind of western there's so many western elements to it and shootout is so much like the wild bunch that you have a Texas Ranger, he's the voice of authority and reason in this, you know, reminds me very much of a Western. It was actually written by John Milius, who wrote the first two Dirty Harry movies. He also wrote Apocalypse Now, where the term extreme prejudice comes from, where they say you need to terminate with extreme prejudice. John Milius also wrote and directed Conan the Barbarian and Red Dawn. Most of the people who work on this film consider it a Western. That works so within Walter Hill's style. He did, you know, actually direct a Western with Lone Riders and a TV series, uh, Broken Trail, but he was very good at bringing hold the Western ideas to action films. Look at The Warriors, for example, I think is very much a Western film mixed with an action film. This film, it's not hiding it very much, but it doesn't want to hide it. Although the plot is everything you've seen before, that's kind of the point with what he's doing. I think, you know, that can get a little dull uh, in this film, at least. It didn't in some of his other earlier films, but in this film it felt a little dull because I'm like, yeah, I've seen this plot like a million times in a million other movies. But Walter Hill seems to have some fun with it, and overall it's cool to watch, and especially that end sequence that's obviously referencing Sam Peckinpah and the Wild Bunch. It's just a crazy, amazing sequence. Very, very well edited. Like, incredibly well edited. This is just an awesome 
action Carol Co. movie, you know, with a little more intelligence behind it than you really expect from something like Carol Co. It's not like one of his best films, I think, but it is one of his better films, even though it is too much of its own genre almost for its own good. And even though that's the point, it is a little too much, but it's still a pretty damn good action movie. So if you have seen Extreme Prejudice and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And I have actually reviewed two other Walter Hill films before. I did them for the Rough Cuts. One of them is The Long Riders, which is one of his westerns. And the other is The Driver, which Drive kind of inadvertently remade in a funny way. Check those out, especially if you've seen Drive and you love Drive. I, I seriously think you should check out The Driver. I think you'd really like it. And then uh, soon I'll be doing my review of Bullet to the Head, 